Welcome to the motherfucking Weasley update, bitches. I am ready to ramble. I'm stoned, all that shit. Yada, yada, yada. I'm just excited because I just saw that the Batman animated series is going to be on HBO Max on January 1st. I might have asked for those DVDs for Christmas. So I'm sort of hesitant to go tell someone like, yay, this is going to be on HBO Max. But either way, I do want those on uh, on DVD so bad just so I can watch them anytime, anywhere. Because, you know, HBO Max can go down at any time. Not that I think it will. It, they are killing it right now. I think they're actually killing it harder than any other streaming service. Let's look this up. Anyways, this is episode 11. It is the 23rd. Let's see. Uh, HBO Max compared to other streaming. You know, I'm going to put my phone on airplane mode so no one calls me. Um, it's the same price as standard. Man, 15 bucks a month. You were shitting me. I had no idea. Yeah, it's just all these articles about Peacock, Netflix, what do you buy? So I'm not going to get into that. But needless to say, I am super fucking pumped about the Batman animated series being on there because that is my definitive version of uh, of Batman with Mark Hamill voicing the Joker. And Kevin Conroy voice, voicing Batman Bruce Wayne. God damn it, they are... The definitive versions of both those characters for sure to me. And that show is just so interesting. Especially just like from an animation standpoint. It was drawn on black paper. Which gives you an idea of how dark it was. Like they they literally looked at what the show was going to be. And they were like yeah there's so much more black on screen than white. That like it doesn't make any sense to start with white paper. (coughs) Which is... And saying, let's see, when did that show premiere? Because I'm thinking about, like, what the animation process was at that time. Oh, fuck. I'd have to turn my phone off here. Okay, we're busting out the iPad. Look this up. I fucking love my iPad Pro. I got it for, uh, um, pretty much for digital art. Just for this big, giant, multi-year project that I'm working on. Um, and this thing is seriously incredible. Ooh, speak the devil. Open it up right to a drawer. And that is looking badass. I'm going to have to work on that later. All right. Let's see. God damn it. I'm going to have to put my fucking hair off. I resisted the man bun for so long, but it's pretty pragmatic. I just got these, like, thick hair headbands. Not headbands. Hair ties, though. They really are pulling on my shit, but... The usual ones just don't work. My hair is pretty fucking thick. Okay. Let's see. Give me a second here. Do, 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 do. All right. What do we got? Batman. Animated. Animated. Animated series. Okay. 1992. Only four seasons. But then there was the Batman animated adventures maybe or the adventure continues and then also batman beyond yeah so this ran 1992 to 1995 so i wasn't even born by the time it was fucking off the air oh and then wow still the new batman adventures which was the sequel show with the same voice actors was 97 to 99 that is Wow, the entire four-season synopsis is The Dark Knight Battles Crime in Gotham City with occasional help from Robin and Batgirl. That's hilarious. Storyline. Oh, there's a more. Oh, this is just written by some some dude. Tim Curry was initially cast as the voice of the Joker, according to IMDb. Wow, but it was deemed too scary. Holy shit. That's pretty crazy. I didn't know that. Let's see. And then the new Batman Adventures. There was a fucking gnarly video game of this. My cousin, sister, and I used to play. Let's see. What was that called? It was like... 
I'm just gonna look up Batman GameCube game. List of game. Oh, I forgot the scene GameCube. Batman GameCube game. Batman Vengeance? That wasn't it. Oh, here it was. Rise of Sinzu. Fuck me, that- What? The Batman Begins game was on the GameCube? I guess that makes sense. It just seems... Wow, that's actually crazy. Because now that I'm looking at a screen grab of that game, it looks so fundamentally similar to what I remember the Fantastic Four game being on the GameCube. Wow, that's, that is pretty crazy. I'm get, wow, from seeing screen caps of both of these games is seriously giving me some, uh, some nostalgia. What is this Batman Vengeance game, though? Man, so I remember it would just start, this Batman Rise of Sinzu game would start and just have, you know, the four Bat family members at the time, Batman, Robin, Nightwing, and, uh, and back row. Oh my god, I'm looking at it right. That's so dope. And you can just both pick. Or like however many people. I guess the GameCube could have up to four players, right? Yeah, so you could play four people at once and just run around and kick fucking ass as the Bat Family. God damn it, that game was awesome. That makes me want to play it so bad. Even seeing screen grabs of this Batman Begins game, I only really remember playing the the beginning of that i just remember the first encounter with scarecrow really well but now that i think of it the shit i remember best from this other batman game was the scarecrow shit too one because the uh new batman adventure the new yeah the new batman adventures or whatever um had the best fucking scarecrow design ever i'm gonna look that up new Batman Adventures. Scarecrow. Yeah, 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 this is it. Oh, it's so fucking weird and creepy. It's just basically a tall dude in a trench coat with, like, a fucked up face hidden under a shadow, big brim hat, and a noose around his neck. Wish I could show it. But one, there's no video element. And two, I would get copyrighted so hard. But fuck me, that is so creepy, dude. That show was so dark for the age demographic. I mean, goddamn. <laughs> the it's so funny too because the Batman animated series Scarecrow is goofy as shit, which I guess you know it should be. It was a kid show, but I, I really, really hope I get it on DVD. And if I don't, it's gonna be on HBO Max. So regardless, I am pretty fucking pumped to watch it here in the near future. What was that? Daredevil. Yeah, that's weird. What was the other thing I was going to look up? Fuck, I, I can't even remember. Huh. Well, needless to say, I would love to play both of those games again. I'd love to just... I, I honestly might watch some gameplay later. I don't know. I'm still looking at the trivia for the Batman animated series. That's right, the score by Danny Elfman, Shirley Walker. She fucking killed it. The score on that is so good. It's like beautiful but haunting at the same time. Gotta listen to that shit. Which, ah, oh, dude, the Mandalorian score. I mean, that whole uh, soundtrack has been blowing me away this season. I just, I, oh my god. I could dedicate this whole, the whole rest of this podcast to talking about Mandalorian. Just the season finale, but... I'm going to start with my, my broad thoughts, so there's going to be big spoilers. This season has just, like, redefined fucking crazy for a Star Wars fan. They're bringing in characters from the animated series and fucking pulling them out of every dark corner of the Star Wars universe and throwing them in here, and it's so, it's paying off so well. Like, every episode, with the exception of maybe one this season i walked away from and was like that's the best episode because the oh man it's just been so so good like right off the bat that opening scene in the first season where you know he's in the weird like heavily graffitied 
uh, underground area. God, that was so awesome, leaving that dude stranded. All these little red eyes blinking. So cool, and it set, set the pace so well. And set the tone so well. Just like, oh yeah, Mando is back, bitch. And then, man, I think the second episode was the one with the, the ice spiders, which was just so so awesome it was it was a filler episode but i don't give a shit because i was entertained through that whole fucking thing it just it reminded me a lot of alien and uh those things are from like rebels and they're based off of original ralph mccrory art who if you don't know is the guy that uh really in so many ways defined what star wars looks like visually like um He's where the Darth Vader, the iconic Darth Vader concept came from, like X-Wings. I'm pretty sure he did TIE Fighters. And just, I mean, his designs in general for just robots and layout and how it's sort of like a very lived-in world. You know, that was something I, I watched in a video that I never picked up on consciously, but that totally makes sense is that, like, nothing in Star Wars is super pretty. It's all pretty worn and lived in, like a real city. Or at least it should be. I don't know if the new ones kept up that so much, but... God, I just like to pretend that those don't exist. But, like I said, this whole season has just been so awesome. And, and that's even reflected in his armor. In his ship, certainly. Until that shit got blown up, that is. But, again, that first episode, holy shit, bringing in fucking... Oh, God, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name right now. Cobb Vanth is the character's name. God, fuck, why can't I... Timothy, Timothy Oliphant is his name. Didn't even have to look it up. Um, bringing in Timothy Oliphant, one, huge fan of his, so that was fucking awesome to see him. Two, Cobb Vanth pulled from the uh, now non-canon fucking Legends books. What a surprise. Like, that's... And it, I, that's honestly, I think, a little bit of fan service. Because if you've seen that episode, you know they could have made up a fictional character for that role. But uh, instead, they went the route they did by just, like, giving fans a little... It was almost like a little reward for watching the show. Like, we know those books are not canon anymore, but we'll give you this. Just because you've been such a good audience. So that was super awesome. And of course, he's wearing the fucking Boba Fett armor. Which, if I'm not mistaken, is from those books. And so immediately, even though it's clear already when, like, the armor doesn't fit him that well, but when he takes his helmet off, you're like, even though you know it's not Boba Fett, you're like, okay, they wouldn't be introducing this armor if they weren't setting something up. That was my first thought through the whole episode. I was like, all right, they're slowly going to set up Boba Fett for the season. And then that episode ended revealing fucking Boba Fett. Which only made me think, like, fuck, if they're really showing this, at the end of this episode, they have some other shit in store. Because they really like to play their reveals close to the vest and sort of, you know, drag them out. And, uh, wow, they just really fucking pulled the rug out from underneath me on that one. So for the whole rest of the season, I was just waiting for Boba to pop back up. And then, of course, in what I think is episode three we get fucking Bo-Katan and the other Mandalorians who is an animated character who also super awesome the woman Katie Sackhoff who voiced her in Rebels and the Clone Wars played her in live action and fucking kicks ass in that role um one just seeing more Mandalorians come down and kick ass was awesome and two as soon as they took their helmets off and started giving him shit about being a part of the Death Watch and wearing, you know, wearing his helmet like that, calling him like a religious zealot. I was like, oh, they're... I knew that eventually they would start questioning this uh, mask shit. Because they already sort of hinted at it at the end of last season. And, uh, yeah, that episode was awesome to see them just start whooping ass together. Um, but then, uh, it honestly, what I thought was the coolest part was when Bo-Katan, like, had the captain cornered, and it's like, where is it? Where's the Darksaber? Because so I was like, fuck, so they are setting up the fact 
that she had the dark saber and now wants to get it from Moff Gideon. Like, where the fuck is this going? And I honestly didn't think that would pay off in this season at all. I, um, I thought that that was going to be like a backdoor pilot to her own show. Because you had to suspect they were going to announce spinoffs, and they did. Um, Rangers of the New Republic, The Book of Boba Fett, and uh, and Ahsoka, which is just a whole different thing that I will get to. But bringing in Bo-Katan and them was just so goddamn motherfucking cool, and the action was awesome. And like, what was, it's like Casca Reeves and Axe Wolf were the other two. And they also kicked ass. Their suits were super cool with the blue Beskar. Um, and then, of course, she name drops fucking Ahsoka at the end. And I, oh my god. My heart sunk. So, oh my god. I, oh, I, like, I honestly still can't even believe it. One, because Rosario Dawson is my girl. I fucking love her so much. She is the shit. Uh, and there were rumors that she was going to play her forever. And Boss Logic, who is a pretty famous digital artist, did fan art of him, her as Ahsoka. I mean, years ago at this point, probably 2016. And from that moment on, I was like, no one else could do it. And uh, and they cast her, and it was so awesome. But before we could get to that episode, there was the one fucking directed by Carl Weathers, which you got to love Carl Weathers. He's in Predator and Combat Carl from the Toy Story short. So fucking, so funny. When they, in the first season, when his arm got fucked up, I really thought they were going to cut it off. Because cause that's just a thing. Like, he uh, he got his arm shot off in Predator as Combat Carl, which was already a rip on that. He fucking, you know, his toy was missing an arm. Uh, but that episode, also, I thought it was going to be a filler, but then they... they pretty much confirmed that the that Moff Gideon wants Grogu's blood to make Snoke or clones for the Emperor because one this has been a huge theory forever because the patches on that one dude's shoulder the like Dr. Pershing or whatever the patches on his shoulder are the Kamino patches uh which is the planet where the clones were made sort of got explored a little bit in the episode two attack of the clones which is just the, it's not the worst anymore but it, it is like just a bit of a dumpster fire that movie uh but it did give us our first appearance with this dude playing Django fett and all the clones i i honestly can't remember his name it starts with a t i think he also voices mo on his dad but um Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They've got the Camino patches. So that was all but confirmed for a while. But, yeah, then this dude pops up and they have all these, like, uh, uh, like bodies in tanks. And the thing that at least confirmed it in my head is that when they go to the shot of these, like, bodies in the tanks, one, it looks, it looks like Snoke. But the confirmation for me is that in the soundtrack they snuck in the Snoke theme. So I was like, wow, they're really, I totally thought they would have ignored the sequels, but they're really, uh, sort of going that route, bridging the gaps between the generations. Very interesting, I think. Um, so that was fucking awesome. And then of course the next episode titled the Jedi, we got to see Ahsoka just rip through people to start off the episode with two white lightsabers. The cinematography fucking absolutely destroying it. The scenery was just so crazy with all this fog. And, oh my god, that that episode was so fucking cool. She's cutting tree logs out, force pushing them at people. and y- You know what else that episode did really well? And I actually saw someone point out that it's because the director, Dave Filoni, who came from the Clone Wars and actually I think created Ahsoka, he directed that episode, and so a lot of the shots sort of play out like a cartoon would in the sense that you don't see someone get, like, cut in half, but it's very obviously implied. Like, for example, uh, there's a shot in the episode where a dude is standing in front of this giant, like, bell thing, and she goes to slash down, and then it cuts to a shot behind the bell, and you just see the bell get cut in half. 
and it sort of splits in half and she walks through it, which is really, really creative because it super badass, uh, a little bit fresh from what I'm used to seeing. And, um, and you can still fit it within that like PG 13 window. So I was pretty impressed by that, that whole episode, just one, we learn baby Yoda's name is Grogu, which I mean, shouts out to the the Disney marketing team for doing the research necessary to figure out what name, <laughs> you know, to pick for baby Yoda. Like that's the thing people don't think about is the, the marketing team came up with every sound and little, you know, like that thing is engineered to be the cutest thing possible. And Grogu just works as a name for whatever reason. Sorry, gotta take a sip of coffee. I'm sort of dying over here. I'm more tired than I should be. I slept in. Yeah, so I don't know why Grogu works, because it sounds a little bit old man, but god damn, it's cute. Man, this kid is losing his mind. This kid is crying so hard, Jesus Christ. I'm trying to record a podcast in here. Sweet Jesus, had to console that child for a while, but I am uh, back and he is happy, so thank Christ, because that was turning into a goddamn shit show getting so loud it's so sad he was just bummed out that he couldn't give his great grandma a hug before she left so we cuddled played some uh, dinosaur cars and here i am i don't even remember what i was talking about i think it was mandalorian but i'm just gonna skip to that what the fuck moment we all had with um with luke skywalker showing up at the end What in the absolute fuck? First, the action in that episode was just so awesome. Shouts out to Peyton Reed for great directing because uh, the action was just so awesome. One, we got to see Boba Fett and Casca Reeves go at it for a little while. Then we got to see Mando fight one of those dark troopers. That was insanely badass. And then we got to see Mando and fucking Moff Gideon fight, which was also insanely badass. Like, that could have been the the high point of the action in the episode, and I would have been more than satisfied. But they went above and beyond in every respect of the word. Every, oh, my God. Every respect. Jesus Christ, it was so, so awesome. When that first X-Wing flew in. Dude, because, like, I resisted getting hyped because I just thought logistically... This would be too hard. They're not going to do it. Because when Grogu went in that episode where we got to see Boba Fett kick so much ass. When Grogu went on the scene stone and communicated with a Jedi. Like, I knew that would have to come back at some point. But, uh, fucking hell, man. Making it, making it Luke was just balls. Oh my god. Yeah, that that kid is crying again. We're worried about our kitties as well because they came into contact with some lily, which I guess it can be pretty fatal to cats, and it's right before the holidays. So, you know, it's fucked trying to get them in right now. So we're stressed about that. But uh, I'm just still fucking pumped about Luke Skywalker showing up. The soundtrack was incredible, too. When he was kicking ass, especially during the second half when he came up the elevator and just started mowing through those things. Oh my god. It was so cool to see Luke in his prime just absolutely destroying. That, everything I wanted out of the sequel trilogy, I got in three minutes of The Mandalorian. I mean, like, as far as I'm concerned with the new trilogy, that's garbage. That's what we should have got. We should have already seen something... Like, ah, oh, so disappointed, but at least we got it. That was pure fan service, and, and they fucking redeemed Luke so hard. Especially, you know, you had to throw a R2-D2 on there. That was just too, too awesome, and I loved how R2 freaked out. Like, he was so excited to see a little baby Yoda, because uh, he's one of the only people throughout the trilogy trilogy to have a super long lasting relationship with master yoda it's interesting that we still haven't learned anything about the species like when the show premiered and 
we saw Baby Yoda, that's where everyone thought it was going. Like, oh, we're going to learn about Yoda's species, but there hasn't been any of that. Really interesting. We don't even know what what species he is. I mean, I guess they could get into that next season, but it's sort of like, where do you go from here? Because I definitely think Grogu will be back. But it's like, okay, he just goes off with Luke. And now you've got this thing between Bo-Katan and fucking Din Djarin where he's the rightful ruler of Mandalore and she has to beat him in combat to win the saber. You know, like, so there is that tension. But with Baby Yoda, it would be so weird if that's just how they ended his story. You know, like, yes, I, I get that he fulfilled his his quest or whatever that was given to him by the armorer and brought uh, Grogu to the Jedi, but it still doesn't feel full circle. You know, like, oh, when he took his helmet off, as soon as Grogu reached out for his helmet, I was like, oh, you fuckers. And the music cues in that scene, it was just so, so perfect. And I love how... Mando didn't even, like, hesitate to do it. He just immediately reached up, ripped the helmet off, and they had that moment of embrace. Really, really well done. And again, to, uh, I mean, much credit to the soundtrack. Ludwig Gore, or something or other, he, he also did Black Panther and uh, Tenet, which is another movie I just watched, but... Yeah, you know, Grogu just goes off with Luke and R2, and you're just like, all right, that's awesome, but okay, so either, basically in my head, one of three things happen. Uh, Grogu goes on to be a part of the Jedi Training Academy that Luke builds and then gets slaughtered by Kylo Ren, or man, the next season of Mandalorian, they reunite somehow, or he dies some other way. Because it's, yeah, I I don't know, it's weird. Because Luke never said anything about Grogu and the sequel trilogy and and all this shit. And I'm sure they can still, like, have it play out in a way where that would make sense. But it it is just sort of, uh, I don't know, it's anyone's guess at this point. There were all these rumors that that Boba Fett spinoff was going to be the third season. But that all sprang from some... I mean, some just bogus rumors about Pedro Pascal's behavior on set and all the shit. It was all fucking garbage. You you know what? Let's uh, bust open the iPad. And we are going to rank the Star Wars movies. Boom. Let's see. Just going to open up. New thing to write on. Alright. I'm going to include Rogue One. And I'm going to do two lists. I'm going to do what are, in my opinion, the best Star Wars movies. And what, in my opinion, what are my favorite. Okay. I'm going to go with the favorites first. So, obviously... I've got to go Empire. No, let's think about this. Yep, I'm going Empire. Empire is my favorite. And then two, we'll go Jedi. Three, A New Hope. Okay, so you had to know that that my favorite three would be the original. The I don't even think that's a... I think that's a pretty basic um, ranking of of those three. I if it honestly if it weren't for the Ewoks, Jedi would be number one for me. Especially, it's just yeah, that movie is insanely awesome. Uh, and then of course by I mean it's number three, so it's still fucking awesome. But New Hope down there at number three, and then for four, fuck. For four on my favorite, I'm going to say Revenge of the Sith. Then I'm going to say, um, Menace, Phantom Menace. And then for number six, 
I'm actually going to say The Force Awakens, because I think that is better than Episode 2. But for number 7, 8, and 9. So let's look at the list so far before I finish this. Empire at number 1, Jedi at 2, New Hope at 3. Feel really good about those. Feel really good about putting number about my number four, uh, Revenge of the Sith. Because, like, the difference between the sequel trilogy and the prequel trilogy, to me, is clear. The prequels have very, very... Like, the story was great within the Star Wars universe, but the production value sucked. And it's the opposite for the new ones. The production is ama- amazing, the CG's awesome, all that shit. But, uh, but the story sucks. But I put... Force Awakens above Attack of the Clones because I'm more entertained watching The Force Awakens and I think it's a more quality movie. Because that's the thing is like the sequels are undoubtedly like higher quality. They just are not um, great like uh, writing as a Star Wars movie. So Force Awakens at number six. Fuck me. I might, it's really hard, because then it's Attack of, so let's just put Last Jedi at 9, because I know that's my least favorite, that movie can fucking suck my dick and gobble my balls, um, fuck, so then it's 7 and 8 are between Attack of the Clones and Rise of Skywalker, you know, I'm actually gonna have to put Clones at number 7 above Skywalker okay here we are at number one we have the Empire Strikes Back I think it's the best because it's got a great tone it's like it's the second one technically so you know you didn't need there wasn't a bunch of character set up the new planets that they went to were fucking awesome you know opening up on a snow planet instead of a desert planet uh, obviously the reveal of Darth Vader being Luke's father, him getting his hand cut off is epic. That whole fight between Darth Vader and fucking, um, uh, Luke Skywalker is just amazing. And of course the introduction of Yoda going to Dagobah, all that shit, Luke learning the force. Just so awesome. Uh, Return of the Jedi is my second favorite because... It's, I mean, just seeing, like, Han, Leia, Luke kick ass together, you know, with Chewie in there, that's, that's awesome, you get a lot of that in this movie, you get a lot of Han and Leia kicking ass on their own, um, and the Ewoks aren't all bad, it's just, like, that ending battle on Endor where they're just taking out the Adats is like, what? But to juxtapose that, I mean, the ending battle with fucking Vader and Luke Skywalker is awesome. It's amazing, the the emotional weight behind it, like, especially when he cuts off Vader's hand, and you have, in my opinion, one of, if not the greatest Star Wars moment ever, which is when the Emperor is like, oh, now kill him, very much like in episode three, um, and Luke says, I'm a Jedi, like my father before me, like, that has to be the best fucking line in Star Wars, that... God damn it, that, that's such a great scene. And Mark Hamill just kills it. And then, of course, Vader turns back. You get to see him under the mask. He says goodbye to his kid. Even, like, Hayden Christensen or Sebastian Shaw, uh, his Force ghost is back. He's He died a Jedi, rebalanced the Force. I mean, so cool. Plus, seeing Vader's suit burn. His whole bo- I mean, that that's just a really, really... Uh, the, the imagery is really, really cool in that moment. Um, then, of course, you, you have to have A New Hope. Because it's just... It started it all. You got Alec Guinness in there as an alive Obi-Wan. Like, it, it really just did a good job submerging you into a new world. You know, introducing you to these characters. Han, oh my god. So awesome. And, you know, I have to put Revenge of the Sith at number four. Because I... I I think it gets ripped on more than what's necessary. Like, yeah, a lot of the CG is bad, but there are some moments that are still really good. Like, 
90% of that last battle with Obi-Wan and Anakin looks pretty good still. Like, it holds up. The rest of it is not so great, but seeing Anakin turn to the dark side is just so awesome. And, like, yeah, that you know, the CG isn't great through that whole opening sequence, but we got Grievous, which is an absolutely kick-ass moment. And talk about great CG moments, like, still holds up well to today's standards is a close-up shot of Grievous's face. Um, and we get the best lightsaber fight ever, which is Obi-Wan versus Anakin, of course juxtaposed with um uh uh fuck palpatine versus yoda i just realized i did not put rogue one on this list at all and i want to so i'm actually gonna have to put fuck me okay i've gotta race this real quick so there's actually 10 movies on this list Okay, god damn it, so racing is taking forever. Alright, so number six, no, 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 actually number five, yeah. Okay, Rogue One at number five after Revenge of the Sith, then we have The Phantom Menace at number seven, then we have Clones at eight, or at seven, fuck. Sky, wait, wait, wait. What am I missing at? One, two... Fuck me. What just happened? Empire, Jedi, New Hope. Sith, so I got those three. Oh my god, I'm, I'm just tripping. Yeah, so Rogue One, number five. Phantom Menace, number six. Attack of the Clones at number seven. Rise of Skywalker at number eight. And Last Jedi. At number nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, 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 I'm missing one. Unless I counted some number twice. Am I just tripping balls? Yeah, because there should be ten, right? If you add row one to that list. Now I have to block these off. Got the original three. Check. Clones, Menace, Sith. Check, check. Oh, Force Awakens is the one I'm missing. I was like, what in the fuck is going on here? Okay. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. Menace is number six. Force Awakens, number seven. Clones, number eight. Skywalker, number nine. And at number ten, The Last Jedi. Okay. I feel really, really, really good about that list. Um, now if I'm going to rank them in order of which ones I think are objectively the best, I'm actually going to have to put Rogue One at the top, and then Empire underneath that, and then... Um, and then... Uh, Return of the Jedi. Then New Hope. Ah, fuck. It's honestly pretty hard. Because after that, I think that Force Awakens is a better movie than, objectively, than any of the sequels. I think that, or the prequels, I mean. I think that about Last Jedi, too. But I don't think that about... Rise of Skywalker, because that movie is just, like, a bit of a clusterfuck with everything that's going on. Like, The Last Jedi, I hated as a Star Wars fan, but just as a casual moviegoer, it's it's definitely a good movie. So at number seven, I'm actually going to have to say Revenge of the Sith, and then I will say Skywalker at eight, and then uh, episode one at 9 in episode 2 at 10 wow yeah yeah I, I feel pretty good about that list too well that took a bunch of time can't believe how much time that took it's already dark outside alright well that's actually how I'm gonna have to conclude this shit then I'll talk to you bitches later peace out